Welcome back to Chicago Independent Television. The frigid winter phenomenon known as the polar vortex has an uncanny connection to global warming. We'll learn more in this next segment. There is little dispute that the anthropogenic rise of world temperatures is and has been actually happening, at least among people who don't have a financial stake in the status quo. After all, we've got record droughts and decreasing polar ice levels and record carbon dioxide levels and growing ocean acidity levels and the polar vortex. What? The polar vortex? The blast of winter cold from the Arctic that drove record cold and snows across North America as far south as Texas during the winter of 2013 and 2014? How is that attributable to global warming? After all, greenhouse gases trap in more heat and increase global average temperatures. So you'd figure that temperatures in the wintertime would be on the whole warmer, instead of seeing record cold levels, at least in North America. But yes, even the polar vortex is yet another crappy consequence of global warming. It's time now for the connection between global warming and the polar vortex. A team of Korean and American researchers investigated the polar vortex disturbance and sought to determine where it came from. Their report was published in September 2014 in Nature Communications. One of the authors of the paper described the polar vortex in 2014 as a side effect of global warming. Here's their best guess as to what happened. Water in Earth's oceans flows in streams from warm zones to cold zones and back again. One of those flows, the Gulf Stream, originates in the southern Atlantic and moves north and east toward Europe. But global warming, caused by you and me burning dead dinosaurs and disrupting the Earth's fragile temperature balance, global warming has made those waters much warmer than normal. In the summer and fall, those warmer-than-usual waters have melted ice caps, particularly focusing on the Barents Sea and in the Kara Sea, north of Europe. When those seas have no ice in the winter months, the heat previously trapped in those seas escapes skyward into the atmosphere in the winter. That heat continues to pour out of the Arctic into the skies through the winter forming an atmospheric high pressure block over the Ural Mountains in western Russia. By January and February, that block starts to affect the behavior of the polar vortex that swirls over the Arctic all year round. The polar vortex is then unable to continue its normal motion around the Arctic because of that block. And the result is that waves of Arctic cold move southward overwhelming the jet stream that serves as a natural barrier against the Arctic cold and into North America proper. Keep in mind that this situation is the best guess the investigators laid out. Time and research will tell if they're correct. Another thing to keep in mind, this line of research into global warming and the polar vortex has been three years in the making. Its main motivation was actually a series of bitter winters that Korea has suffered in the past 10 years. By coincidence, the paper that was published in Nature Communications was submitted for review on January 15, 2014, just days after North America got kicked in the teeth by the polar vortex. If this is all true, or more true than we could have imagined, we have yet another reason to curb our emissions of greenhouse gases, to avert the death heat that would roast us, the rising ocean levels that would flood us, and the global warming-induced polar vortex that would freeze us in the wintertime. Mother Nature is clearly trying to tell us something. It's long past time to act. Hi, I'm Bourbon Supreme, and whenever I'm watching some sort of moving images on a screen, it's indie media for sure.